I'm Bambi Francisco, and I'm speaking with Mark Mahaney. He's an internet analyst, a city investment research, and an II rated internet analyst as well. Uh, we're going to talk about growth areas across the internet. Mark, you have this uh, report for 2010 about the growth areas across the internet. One of the things um, you talked about was um, the migration of TV ad budgets going online. So that's great news for video companies, I, I, I imagine. But who's who's going to benefit? So uh, figuring out who's going to benefit is a tough thing. I've got a few candidates I'll throw out. My guess is you'd probably have a better idea than I would. Uh, but the, the backup, backup here is all of Internet advertising to date has come from where? Newspapers, yellow pages, direct marketing. Classifieds, yeah, killing the that's right. That's yeah. right. And very, very little has ever come from standard, you know, traditional TV ad budgets. Yet when you step and look at that big pie chart of where all ad dollars go, the biggest chunk of that, biggest pie slice, you know what I'm talking about, uh, has yeah. actually come to uh, TV uh, ad budgets. Right. And so, you know, with two years ago, you had kind of a tipping point in terms of video usage online with YouTube. Mm -hmm. And now this year, you've, or 2009, you had more and more tipping points. Like there are more people watching Hulu than are subscribing to Netflix, you know, for DVDs. Little tipping points like that that tell you that as TV and video usage is migrating to the Internet and not just... Uh, amateur, but you know, professional TV and video usage uh, and production that those ad dollars are likely to siphon over. And who actually gets those is a very, it's a wide open question right now. But if you get those, do you think you can, you can, well, extract more money from an advertiser because you're doing more targeting o online? I mean, would the sort of, I mean, if you could, if Hulu could attract, could, could Hulu make more money online with its video than what it does? And, sort of in traditional sense. Well, what Hulu has stated uh, is that they're, without giving exact numbers, they've said that the CPMs that they're getting, the cost per thousand impressions yeah. of their ad rates, are materially higher than what uh, their uh, what TV uh, companies are getting. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, is that just a scarcity issue because they show much many fewer ads mm -hmm. than you typically see on a TV show, or is there something really better about the targeting that they're able to offer to uh, advertisers that makes their impression worth more than it is on a TV network? That's an open question. I, I don't know whether we've really answered that. There's certainly a scarcity value. I get that. But whether they actually have better targeting technology, if they do, that justifies the premium. But we know that Hulu is able to get away now with a premium, and it's, I assume it's I assume it's uh, I assume it's deserved. But it's hard to see. We haven't seen the evidence of that can, yet. Can YouTube be a beneficiary of that? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Can't make any yeah, absolutely. Money. As more and more professional content comes to YouTube as well. And how are you going to advertise that? Maybe through some subscription uh, model. Hulu may have to do some of that too. But certainly there's the ability to, to match video uh, usage with video advertising. Is that is what you're seeing now in terms of mon new monetizations online for online video? Is it just subscription and advertising or anything? It's probably going to be more? a hybrid model like that. And yeah, I think okay. you're starting to see real numbers. Uh, numbers that came out from the Interactive Advertising Bureau suggested that within display advertising, internet advertising, which grew you know low single digits year over year in the U.S. in 09, video advertising grew more like 30 percent off a small base, but it did grow 30 percent. So there's growth there, and at that level, it's going to be sizable soon. That's good. So thir potentially 30 percent again this year. So. Yeah. Um, the acquisition of AdMob by Google, Google really puts mobile video in the spotlight, much like when Google acquired YouTube back in, um, was it a couple years ago? Yeah. Years ago. Um, but yet, it really wasn't ushering in the era of, you know, video monetization. So, I mean, is there money to be made in mobile video? Well, so AdMob also targets just overall display ads on video devices. It can be video, but it can be not be video. It can just be okay. basic banner ads. You pull out your um, iPhone and you start surfing around, and you'll see ads placed up there by both Quattro, bought by uh, Apple, right. and uh, AdMob, bought by uh, uh, bought by Google. So. Uh, if the functionality of the devices improves, and boy, you look at these uh, some of these most recent devices, the Droid, the Nexus One, the uh, I, uh, iPhone 3GS, like we have, they, this is a quantum leap forward, I'm telling you the obvious, but it's a quantum leap forward in mobile internet experience, and it becomes a walking computer, a mobile PC, and with mobile PCs become, come uh, mobile video opportunities and therefore come mobile advertising opportunities. 
Terry, let's talk about your third, your third growth area that we haven't touched on. Um, microtransactions or smart, well actually, you know, we haven't touched on both of these, microtransaction or smartphones, you, you choose. Yeah, so that's, uh, you know, smartphones is, there's a tipping point here, and go back five years, you know, 2003, uh, prior to that, people were trying to figure out how do you invest in broadband, and uh, you might remember Excite at Home, which if you mm -hmm. invested in Excite at Home, you'd have lost all your money. Yeah. Uh, but when broadband hit 20% of the U.S. households, you know, kind of a tipping point like that, all of a sudden you saw online advertising and online commerce growth rates go hyper for like three or four yeah. years. They were an indirect play beneficiary of broadband. I think the same thing is happening with smartphones now. Now that they're 20% of U.S. mobile phones are smartphones and, that, and they're increasing at a rapid rate, it's having a knock-on impact on online ad growth rates mm -hmm. uh, and on online commerce growth rates. So that, that, that's, it's the, the, for us, the, the trend that we're really excited about is smartphones and what impact it's had uh, is, uh, what is the business impact of having 20% of all phones out there be smartphones and just aggressively and aggressively more getting used. But there isn't a, a, a standalone candidate you, candidate that you can look at. Um, as an IPO candidate? Not as an IPO candidate, no. no. There isn't anything that's... The derivative, public, the derivative public company plays in the internet space is clearly Google. What are people using smartphones for? So, okay, and we talked about microtransactions through Zynga. That's right. And that's one of the companies um, that... Uh, the open question there, I think, is going to be, do you want to, as a public investor, and maybe as a private investor too, do you want to, which, do you want to try to do a platform bet? Uh, there's a company called Wild Tangent, you know, a broad mm -hmm, platform mm -hmm. bet. Or do you want to try to go with the app winner? You know, like uh, the farm, you want to try to predict the, tomorrow's Farmville. We know who today's Farmville is. Can a company that created today's Farmville create tomorrow's Farmville? Mm -hmm, like that's, yeah. that's a, there's a bit of a fashion risk bet. Uh, with Zynga? Yeah, well, or with like any company yeah. like that. Yeah, with any company like that, nothing against uh, for or against Zynga. I'm just, there's, yeah. a, there's, as an investor, you want to step back and think, do I want to do a platform bet on this? Do I want to do an enabling technology bet? Or do I want to go at the head of the class or the train and try to pick the, the game winner? That's a, tough, that's a tough thing to do. But if that's companies really can create tough, yeah. a couple of good games in a row, maybe they've got something. And by the way, this is not that far away from investing in video game companies. And some of those companies have been great investments over the years. And they have been. So anyway, okay, so great. So great growth ideas, uh, growth, um, growth ideas for the internet um, in 2010. Thanks, yeah. Mark. Thanks, Bambi. I've been speaking with Mark Mahaney. He's an internet analyst at City Investment Research. I'm Bambi Francisco.